Well, hello everyone and welcome to Hogarth's Global Astrology. Know your planets, know yourself, or know your nation, know yourself. The two are interchangeable. Right, okay, so I thought I would make um, a little recording today, <clears throat> just in a way to give a little bit of an astrological update. Uh, did many of you, uh, did any of you watch the uh, solar uh, eclipse on April 8th, which of course was a couple of days ago now, went across, uh, of course, went across America. Let me just put my phone on um, on uh, airplane mode. There we are. Um, yes. So, of course, it was X marks the spot. And apparently the uh, totalitarian, the totality the duration of the totality of that from what they were predicting. And uh, and according to some of the really old uh, philosophers, they say for each minute of totality, that is equivalent to one year of the, the effect that the eclipse would have have so apparently it was four and a half minutes you guys can let me know in the comments if that if it ended up being the the case and if so that means the this eclipse will have a, a duration or an effect for the next four and a half years so it's not just what happens on the day of the eclipse it's what happens you know um afterwards and the energy of that uh, obviously continues and then particularly as well in the next kind of you know four to six months as well well three four six months we'll also see see the effects so really these eclipses and stuff like that they are portents portents harbingers of the future and we also need to remember as well the eclipse was also happening with um that comet which they call well, I mean, they're calling it the, the you know, the, the devil's comet, aren't they? So um, and that one kind of comes back into our system every 71 years or so or, or the like. So we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I hope for those that watched it, I hope it was a magical experience. And let's hope as well this leads to a greater awakening or at least an awareness uh, in the world and uh, and stuff and stuff like that. And um, we'll, we shall see. Yeah, we shall we shall see. Um, only time will tell what the full uh, what the full results of the eclipse are, but we will see it over the coming years. But this isn't just uh, an eclipse video. I thought it, it was worth mentioning, of course, because I think it's probably one, been one of the most viewed eclipses to ever have happened. And just to tie a bow on it, um, it will be the last uh, full total uh, solar eclipse to cross America until 2044. So, um, you know, that's so that's literally. Yeah, I mean, look, today's date is 10th of April 2024 and it is five to eight my UK time. So that is literally 20 years from now. <laughs> Let's see what's going. Let's see if YouTube is still going. If anything is still going at that point, I hope it is, uh, of course. But my main reason for making this video today was just to give a little update on the other celestial activities that are going on. And as of today, 10th of April, 2024, Saturn and Mars are now conjunct. Yes, they are now conjunct in the sky. They are together. And, of course, we have the Uranus-Jupiter uh, conjunction as well, which is reaching its perfection basically in 10 days, uh, 10 days from now, um, on the uh, 20th of April. And the two will be exactly conjunct uh, from the 22nd, 20, uh, sorry, 20th, 21st, 22nd. Now, um, those of you who, of course, have been watching my channel, on the 22nd of April is when I'm planning to launch my book. Yeah. <laughs> the Candid Guide to Vedic Astrology. I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to throw it in there because, you know, Mercury is retrograde at the moment as well. And they say, oh, one should never do these things or Mercury is retrograde. However, Mercury will be stationary direct on the day that, that my book uh, launches. But also as well, it's got that energy of Jupiter and Uranus 
Jupiter is expansion, but of course Uranus is also one of the planets of astrology. So I thought it was perfect time to launch an astrological book. And Mercury retrogrades, but what are retrogrades all about? Mercury, of course, is all about writing communications of all kinds. But um, a retrograde means to review, revise, or reassess. And of course, with my book being Neo-Vedic Astrology, this book in a way, in many ways, is a revision, as it were, of the conventional and accepted placements uh, of the stars according to tropical astrology. As you know, Vedic astrology is sidereal and it takes that movement into place. And of course, because of precession, which I've just all written up in my uh, glossary, by the way, the glossary of the book is now finished. Uh, procession is that the stars, due to basically the slight wobble on the axis uh, of the Earth, so as the Earth goes around the sun, we are on basically uh, an axis of approximately 23 degrees. And within that, uh, this axis like that, there's a slight wobble like this. And that slight wobble is called, um, that's called precession. Procession is forward, precession is backwards. But it's essentially precession is what alters the, um, from our perspective on Earth, the position of the stars. Let's put it that way. And that cycle lasts approximately 26,000 years. It's, it's, it's all in the book. And I've all got diagrams that explain it all and stuff like that. You've seen my images as well with the yugas and all that kind of stuff describing describing that. In fact, let's just reach for where the old illustrations so what i do is uh and i've got a i've got a designer working on the front cover of the book oh it's starting to look really good well actually it was my design so look this is the front that's the front cover design obviously she's going to put in the, the designer's going to put in the text and stuff like that but i got her to kind of basically uh, create that template because it's something very very new you can unique and different so Look, these are these are the illustrations. Obviously, one of the illustrations that's going to be there. So this is about the nakshatras. You guys have seen that already. So all you've got these uh, hand illustrated, by the way, hand illustrated. I really do. I really do uh, believe that that's a really important thing, especially in this day and age, yeah, of um, AI and you know all, all of this kind of stuff. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Everyone can use whatever they want, but I think in a time of so much computer generated stuff it's good to have original hand-drawn illustrations but the yugas is this cycle here now i would have debuted this illustration a few months ago now actually i think it was last year and this shows the cycles of time in this diagram here or oh, everything's backwards there you can see the earth where i've illustrated the earth and that little wobble that you see that circular thing that is the wobble of precession which affects what signs are rising do you see so i've got all of the signs around here and at the moment we are in this axis which is basically pisces and virgo and we are moving into the age of aquarius yeah which is over here uh so i can't remember i think it will be uh, aquarius will become the spring equinox and then leo will become the autumn equinox oops sorry i was a little bit too low there i'm having to look through the paper to see where my hand is because everything is in reverse so as you can see if you look at the arrow we're not quite there yet but we're very close this is why i've said really the i describe it as the dawning of aquarius the dawning of aquarius so this is why we're seeing so much change so much flux in the world this is also as well why i wanted to kind of uh, launch the book like i said at this at this important time in human history where we're going to be reviewing revising absolutely everything also as well i wasn't actually planning to talk about this much about the eclipse and so we'll get on to mars uh, uh saturn and uranus jupiter in a minute but certain things are being triggered in the memory uh this eclipse as well also is uh the sort of like the first new moon of the um celestial year 
So they say whatever happens um, at this time of this particular new moon that happens around about springtime in sidereal Pisces each year until, of course, it moves into Aquarius, which eventually it will do. Still a way to go yet, folks. Um, that will kind of symbolize the whole the whole year. So everything kind of leading up to the eclipse and just after the eclipse, this will be sort of symbolic of what of what a lot of the year will entail uh, as a whole. So I think you know, 2024, as I've said, is going to be very eventful. It's already been very eventful already. Uh, remember too, we pass over this year. This could be when the the red cows, the red heifers, they maybe get the yeah, and the burn and overlooking you know the temple mount the old temple mount yeah where the alaxa mosque now stands and this will be happening from the mount of olives so i for me i think that is gonna be very very eventful i can't go into the full details of what i think will potentially happen but um it wouldn't surprise me if something happened with the uh, Alaximos and uh, something like that, where it could be maybe there's an act of God that could happen. Let's just that's that's my but that's my little speculation and that's my little inkling, my little thing. And I, I'll, we'll just keep it between us. Let's just see what happens. I hope it passes without uh, event, actually. But everything happens for a reason. You know, everything happens for a reason. And they've. Those cows that they've had delivered from uh, Texas, they they need to have their moment soon because they can't they can't reach the age of four, and I think they're coming up to three years old. They're three years old already, so there's there's a, a narrowing time window, and I think logic tells me that Passover is the most logical time to do it. And of course, it also coincides coincides with the Jupiter Uranus uh, conjunction. Whether they waited for that particular conjunction as well, I don't know. But I find the timing very interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you, and let's talk about let's talk about the Saturn Mars conjunction, so we can see what that potentially uh, means now. This conjunction is not a super rare one. It happens once every couple of years. Uh, so let's just do that. Let's get this bit done here. Drink a little bit of water. So it's not a rare conjunction. Why? Main reason why is, is that Mars only takes a couple of years to go through the zodiac. Yeah, so you can imagine Mars is, you know, whiz, whizzing around, uh, do, doing uh, doing his thing. I wonder if you can actually, let me just make sure you can actually see me. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Uh, let's, um, let's just go like this. Uh, come on. There we are. Let's just get that to come down a bit. All right, so what I've done here is this is the sky as of today. Yep, so 10th of April 2024. And this chart was cast at uh, 24 minutes past 7 p.m. UK time. So this is where the planets are right now. As you can see, Pluto is now direct in sidereal Capricorn. Yes, as you've heard me repeat ad nauseum, but just to cover that ground, because obviously many there are many of you that are new subscribers. And of course, most of us here have, have been brought up in the Western tradition. Uh, but with uh, Vedic, and this is also why I'm publishing the book as well. So we have precession, which is basically the stars are slowly moving backwards by one degree every 71 slash 72 years. They don't wait until the 70 odd year. They just slowly moving backwards and that's called precession and that's what i showed in that diagram there and it's also in the glossary of my book and well described in the book as well so once people start reading this book everyone is gonna who reads it is now going to understand about precession which is physics this is true physics and this is what determines that that slow movement of the rising signs of the spring equinox which has just been going on since 
you know, probably for billions of years. Uh, I mean, really, uh, it's been uh, for a long time. So uh, now, of course, uh, with Western astrology, because they don't take into account precession, obviously Western astrology still works, but they don't take precession into account. So they are 24 degrees ahead of the true placements. So um, the Western astrologers are talking about Pluto being in Aquarius. Yeah. But as you can see here is at seven degrees and 47 minutes of sidereal Capricorn, which is also the uh, which is the Pluto return that's happening in all of America. Yeah. And it, you know, it became precise uh, in February. So now it's crossed over itself. So this process, remember, Pluto's orbit is between 244 to 248 years. So you can round it up, you know, to like 250, you know, uh, pretty much. And of course, America is about 250 years old and it is having this Pluto return. And this is why we're seeing such volcanic, tumultuous and extraordinary events happening in politics, not just in America, but of course, the whole world. Now, with the UK. Now, what we need to remember is, again, I wasn't planning to talk about the Pluto thing, but, you know, in a way, it kind of makes sense, has to be discussed. So you can imagine when America declared independence, so it's returned back to itself in the in the Declaration of Independence chart, which most uh, Vedic astrologers use, some Western do as well. But uh, uh, definitely uh, Vedic astrologers use the um, 6.30 p.m. July 4th, 1776, Philadelphia. Yeah, it works amazing. So Pluto has returned in terms of that chart, but it's going to move over all of those positions, etc. Look what's happened in that time. Now, you can imagine for Britain, for the UK, that was also a very difficult Plutonic experience because, of course, that was the colony at that time of America declaring itself independent from Britain. And the irony is now, of course, is that America, quite rightly for its for its reasons, declared itself independent so it could be a sovereign country and no longer under the rule of kings. And yet there's a deep irony, which is that almost the best part of 250 years later, we have someone running for the presidency that wishes to be a king and is almost being exalted by his followers as a king. And those people are longing to be ruled by him. Isn't that interesting? Do you see? Because this is how these returns work, uh, whether it's happening in because it's a Saturn return, which we got our first one around about age 29, second one around about, you know, you know, 58, 59, 60. And then by the time we come to our third uh, Saturn return, which is our late 80s, early 90s, we're like, take me, God, take me now, ready to go. Yeah. So whenever a planet returns back to itself, there's always a review, a revision, a reassessment in terms of that area of life. Yeah what we're focusing on, uh, what's most important to us. There's a re-evaluation. So, of course, for America in the USA chart, Pluto is returning in the second house because actually America has um, a, a Sagittarius rising ascendant, according to Vedic astrology. I think they might have it in the Western as well, but different degree. But anyway, in Western tropical, I'm oh, sorry, in sidereal is definitely Sagittarius, which puts the Pluto return in the second house. The second house is all about money, resources of all kinds, education, food, agriculture, family, and values. Yeah, values. So in a way, this is very pertinent, isn't it, really? Because this, this Pluto return is asking america and americans as a collective what are your values while at the same time it's because it's pluto and pluto is hades god of the underworld it is dredging everything up from the depths from the dark 
And Pluto always does this, and this is part of, of, of a Pluto transit. This is what Pluto does. Whatever sign he's in, all of the things, all the associations, the things connected with that sign, uh, you know, the, the corruption or the shadow uh, of that becomes exposed, yeah? In earlier years, when, uh, when Pluto uh, was in Sagittarius, Sagittarius deals with what? Uh, religion, yeah? Spirituality, even fanaticism, you know, stuff like that. So if we think of what was happening, you know, back in those days, you know, that's when we were always like the war on terror. Do you remember Al-Qaeda, all of that stuff? Uh, the beheadings, yeah? And then, of course, the scandals, of course, of the of the Catholic Church as well. Let me just check a particular date on something because let me just see when. Uh, I just want to see, just to give you an example. Um, one minute, if we look here, I'm going to put here. When did yeah? When did not true? Yes. So let's see. Yes. Yeah, just, just as I thought. Just as I thought. So if I'm going to show you here something very significant so you can see, like, I'm going to show you two very important dates. Two very important dates. Forgive my digression here. I'm having a leaner digression. <laughs> uh, how am I doing on, on time? I can't say how, how I'm doing on time. But anyway, let, let me just see. How am I doing? How am I doing on time? All right. It's not too bad. I want, I want this video to be less than an hour. Anyway, but let's jump in the time machine and I'm going to go to animated transits and I want to show you how pertinent this stuff is. So we're going to go back in time. So when um, when planets leave signs and enter signs, that can often be the times when dramatic things happen. As you've always heard me saying, planets are declamatory in the sense they proclaim uh, their entrance or their leaving of, of, of something, often with very big symbolic things. And this also as well highlights as well uh, why, you know, why I'm always banging on about sidereal astrology. Because when I show you these two things, it's going to make a lot of sense. So if we look here, so if we go, let's go back in time. I'm going to click on yearly. And we're going to look at the time when uh, Pluto entered uh, sidereal Capricorn. Now, remember, sidereal Capricorn is also government, yeah, institutions, infrastructure, and stuff like stuff like that. Old institutions, top top down structures, big business, uh, big like even big things like big pharma stuff like that. Anything that. Anything that is like big companies, hierarchical structures, royal family as well, particularly the British royal family, which is the second oldest only to the Japanese royal family. Yeah. So, of course, you know, it's, it's a bit. Well, that's what I heard anyway recently. But it's bloody old. Yeah. It's very, very old. I mean, at least, it's at least a thousand years old, at least a thousand years old, the, the, the British royal family. So, of course, that is a very Capricornian institution of course with very strict hierarchy and top-down structure yeah makes sense doesn't it so but anyway so so if we look here so let's do let's do yearly and let's just go back in time and let's go back to 2021 now obviously look keep keep an eye down here on pluto yeah uh and there we are and let's do monthly now Keep your eye on Pluto, Pluto. Oh, now look at this, look at this. Uh, and let's go back another month. 11th of the 1st. And then let's do daily. Well, let's do a week. And then let's do daily. Now, you'll see the point that I'm making here. So you can see, basically... Uh, sometimes the, the with it with it, it varies, but look, you can see around about the thirtieth, thirtieth of December. But really, like on the, we could also call it the uh, the first. I often like to use the first of January, but it was very close to the first of January. 
2021, Pluto, you can see, moved into sidereal Capricorn, according to Vedic astrology and astronomy and physics. <clears throat> this is actually where his physical body was. Yeah, you can see here if we go back. Technically, you see, it was it was on the 30th of the 12th, but it's still at zero zero. It's not got one minute on it yet. Once a planet starts to gain a minute or two, then it can start manifesting its energy. So you can see when it's at zero 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 or zero degrees, four minutes anyway, sidereal Capricorn. What happened? We all know what happened five days later. Yeah, if we go here, if we click, we had January the 6th. And you see how these other planets moved in. Saturn also was, was, was also there as well. But anyway, look, the point is, and Mercury. So we had January the 6th. So you can see a big Plutonian declamatory event. I actually predicted um, the insurrection. I didn't use the word insurrection because it had fallen out of use at that point, of course. But I said there could, there's going to be a big riot. I said Donald Trump is going to organize some big riots, some big hoo-ha, yeah, some crazy stuff. And the way I worked that out, what confirmed it for me, was not only of the eclipse of um, that happened in November 2020, which happened right over his moon, I said he's going to do something absolutely batshit. Just look back at those videos, and he did. But when I looked at his daughter Ivanka's chart, her Novampshire chart, and looked at Trump from there, that, and I saw how kind of crazy and toxic it was, that confirmed it for me. And I said he's going to do something crazy. And at that time, Pluto was moving through the tail of the flying gripe, which is another word for like eagle or bird of prey or the like. And I always say there's three places you want to avoid on a bird. Yeah. The beak, the claws and the tail. Yeah. Because we all know what comes out the tail end. And I said that something poopy. I said something as there might be something, a riot or something like that in the capital. Honestly, go back and look back at that video. I think it's like the um, November. It would have been a video from November. 2021 when i was looking at the eclipses and talking about the eclipses that will happen on trump and i think it was my christmas prediction uh 20 what am i talking about november 2020 the eclipse of november 2020 and my christmas video of of the big stellium that was at that time in sagittarius in chris around christmas of 2020 and then i said in 2021 once Pluto moves in, then we could see something kind of like crazy. And it did. I thought it would take a couple of weeks. It only took five days. Yeah. Or, or, or over a week, if you count the zero, zero minutes when Pluto was in there. So there's that. But I want to show you another important day. Why, what can happen when a planet is near the end of a house? So if we, if we go here, I'm going to go here to April 5th. 15th i'm gonna go april 15th so 15th of april 15th of april 2019 and there was something very important or very significant that happened on that day so let's just do okay and then you see it all changed now look at this now, do you remember I said I said when planets are about when planets are about to leave a sign, they do important things as well. If you look here, you see Jupiter and Saturn are together along with K2. Jupiter is the planet of spirituality and religion. Yeah. Religions of all kinds, spirituality of all kinds can also deal with religious dogma and all of this kind of stuff. What Saturn? Saturn is government uh infrastructure structures of all kinds yeah i also refer to him as the planet of architecture this is why when we've seen with the saturn mars conjunction which i'll go back to uh we saw the, the accident with the with the bridge yeah the accident with the bridge and then here we have k2 now k2 as you know i refer to as snip snip and you will see here 
uh, the Pluto K2 Saturn conjunction was very close together. And this is really quite a dark combination. K2 deals with losses. Yeah, it can deal with losses, endings of things. But look at the degree of Pluto. Do you see it's at 29 degrees of sidereal Sagittarius? So it's right at the end. Remember, Pluto takes a long time to move. As we know, it, it, over those months, he eventually, you know, left, went into sidereal uh, Capricorn. I think he dipped in and then came back out and then came, stayed in, which is when we uh, soon after had uh, January 6, 2021. But on the 15th of April, 2019, when you, where Pluto was in the last degrees, about to leave the sign, this was the day that Notre Dame burnt down. Yeah. Jupiter, remember what I said, religion, spirituality. When Pluto was going through the sign of Sagittarius, we were dealing with what? All of the scandals, remember, of the Catholic Church, the jihad and all of that stuff, ISIS. Do you remember all of this stuff? And I'll just say for entertainment purposes only. Yeah. War on terror. Yeah, it was all based around what? Ideology, beliefs, Sagittarian things. Then with Pluto in the last degree of Sagittarius, Notre Dame burns down. Then he changes signs, you know, uh, a, a while later, once he goes fully into sidereal uh, uh, Capricorn, insurrection. So I just wanted to show like this is this is why I keep banging on about this stuff, because it's real. Yeah. Here's Saturn, structures, architecture, very, uh, you know, in the same house as Jupiter, spirituality, religion, K2. Um, like I said, losses. K2 is also known as the hottest planet. It's considered even hotter than the sun, said to have the nature of Mars, but it can literally deal with things burning. And then, of course, Pluto is the phoenix rising from the ashes. The spire of Notre Dame fell but since then, it has been rebuilt, isn't it? They're kind of, I, I don't know if they've completely finished rebuilding yet. Um, but uh, let's let's just see. Let me just see here. Um, uh, when will Notre Dame, when will, be, when will Notre Dame be finished? When will uh, Notre Dame, Notre Dame be uh, reopened? Here we are. Notre Dame, progress of work. So let's see here. So you guys can see, you know, with the camera, I probably should probably share that on the thing with you. But they're, 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 re, they're rebuilding it. Let's put all. The reopening of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris is announced for the 8th of December 2024. There we are. Uh, so there we are. So they're going to have a, and then a, Te diem, I don't know what that means, is planned for April 15th. So that, oh, that's in, look at that. Oh, there we are, exactly five years after the fire. Look at that. So let me just maybe, what I'll do is, let me do a stop share on that. And then let's do, I wasn't planning to talk that much about, um, Let's do window. Let's do. Oh, OK. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. One minute, one minute. Let's let's actually just take a look at that. Let me just get a tab open. I think you can still see me. Uh, not sure. Um, reopening. Reopening. There we are. And let me just do, let's go here. And then just show you. Sorry, I probably should have had this kind of lined up, but I really wasn't planning to. Um, let's just do here. Come on. There we are. And then share. There we go. Here, here we are. So the reopening of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris is announced 
for the 8th of December, like I said, 2024, a Te Deum is planned for the 15th of April, 2024, uh, exactly five years after the fire. So we can see Pluto was leaving, about to leave, and then kaboom, Notre Dame burnt down. Let me just see what this is. I don't know what a, a Te Deum is probably some kind of ceremony, isn't it? Let me just copy that. Copy. And then let's just do paste meaning. Yeah, let's see what the meaning is. A hymn of praise to God. There we are, Te Diem. So a hymn of praise to God containing many passages from the Bible that is used in the Anglican communi Communion, Luther Lutheran Church and Roman Catholic Church as part of morning prayers on festive occasions. So there you are. We, we can see it there. They are going to have uh, they're going to have um, a special um, hymns and prayers and stuff like that. But I just wanted to use that. You can see why I use those two examples there. That's just from the movement of Pluto. So this is why everything is so intense, because Capricorn also deals with government. Forty nine percent of the world's global population is going to be what voting this year. We've been noticing what that the governments around the world have been what going to the right, becoming more extreme, becoming a bit more radical. You know, we've seen a bit of fascism and stuff like that creeping back in, you know, around the world. Autocracies, dictators uh, wanting to come to the fore. We all know what Duck Larange's intentions are. huh? We all know, you know, he's made his made his sentiments clear. Does that mean dictatorship is going to take over the whole world? No, not necessarily. But bloody hell, take a look. <laughs> At because this is why I'm going to these lengths. And why I keep, you know, repeating this. So it just so that it sinks in. Because I've shown you those dates there and you can see for yourself the positions of where Pluto is. Pluto will always show what is the most extreme that is going on. This is why I also say as well, when it comes to the age of Aquarius and everyone wanting it, wanting it to arrive, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. You know, I think we should take our time before we get into that age of Aquarius energy full, full time because we need to fix the issues that's going on right now, because we see how global autocracy, I mean, if we think of the Hoover, you know, which is a W and an H and an O, you know, and I'll call it the Hoover so I can say it without too much yeah, censorship going on for entertainment purposes only. Uh, they're doing basically a power grab and all of this kind of stuff. So while we're being distracted by many things, there's a lot going on. But also as well, Pluto ushers in what? Transformation. Yeah, transformation, alchemy. We're seeing a lot of transformation happen, aren't we, right now with what? The royal family. Look what's been happening with the with the uh, Princess Catherine saga. Yeah, that was triggered by the lunar eclipse, which, of course, was happened a few, week, few weeks ago. Now we've just had the solar eclipse. Look at that. But again, the royal family, old institutions, hierarchies, Pluto bringing... You know, some maybe some unpleasant stuff up. Let's not forget, Pluto is also the planet of crisis and near-death experiences. You know, sadly, we have King Charles and uh, Princess Catherine both struggling with cancer. And I wish them a speedy recovery as well. And I really hope that they're going to make it. But you see now how it all starts to dovetail together. It all starts to make sense, doesn't it? When when we start reading uh, the planets and what they're doing from the sidereal placements with the manifestations in the world become abundantly clear. So I just wanted to share that. Now, I know that I'm preaching to the choir and you guys have heard all of this stuff before, most of you. But many of you are new subscribers and welcome, of course. Um but it's also as well, I just want to lay those foundations as well. So when the book's out there, it will all make sense. You will have this reference point where you can then look at your own life as well 
and the life of your loved ones or anyone close or influential in your life. And then you can start looking at it from that perspective and the nakshatras, you'll be learning about them. It's not a complete full book on the nakshatras, but there are more detailed descriptions in the glossary of, of, of the book of all 27 of them. We're going to learn more about the fixed royal stars as well, the Persian royal stars. Uh, which are connected with with uh, with archangels as well. So you have Aldebaran, the star of spring, Archangel Michael. You've got Regulus, which so many of you uh, that come to me for consultations or just in general in life have planets conjunct that star. Regulus is the star of summer. Uh, the energy, uh, the archangel of that is said to be Raphael. Then you have um, Antares. Uh, and uh, who's uh, seen as the guardian. Um, oh, gosh. So Regulus is also the guardian or the watcher of the north. Yeah. Then we get to Antares, which is the star of autumn or fall, also a warlike star associated with Archangel Uriel. Yeah. And then finally, you've got Famalat, um, the fourth Persian royal star, the guardian of the south. And this is um, associated with Archangel Gabriel. Yeah. And, you know, and it's the star of winter. So all of this stuff is, is in the books. I mean, this is why, for example, with where is it? Here we are going back to this illustration here. You see these big stars that I've put here. These are all the royal stars and i put their banners that's of course the earth in the middle showing procession again and stuff like that so it will all make sense so that you know we can then start looking at global events because we need to fix the issues that we have with a lot of the corporate world and what and billionaires yeah pluto deals with plutocracies billionaires you know stuff like that small a very small amount of people having a tremendous amount of power just like the nuclear bomb yeah so we need to resolve these things before we get into that age because yes aquarius can be wonderful but the shadow of aquarius is dystopia uh, the shadow of aquarius is technology run rampant the shadow of Aquarius is like things like you see in the Terminator. Yeah. And you've got a lot of crazy people that want to make that real as well. So we need to change all of that first, alchemize all of that first. We're also going into the age of magic. So honestly, get your magical books, learn your stuff and do, you know, for positive. Try not to dabble in the black magic if you can. <laughs> the positive magic. Yeah, as a way to kind of in many ways to alchemize and counteract some of those darker forces that are trying to work. Now, anyway, let me just get back to what I was supposed to do. Ended up doing a giant digression there, didn't I, folks? Sorry about that. So let's go back to uh, let's go back to sharing the screen. Let's go back here to. Let's do. Oh God, I hope it's. I hope it's saved. Let's go on the main screen. Let's go back to the main screen. Here we are. So going back. So yes, I ended up doing a long digression there on Pluto, but you know, worth covering that ground. So as of today, we can see here is Pluto, Mars at twenty degrees twenty four minutes. Here is Saturn at twenty degrees twenty eight minutes. They are only four minutes apart. So I could, that is, they're at a, they're exactly conjunct, basically. You know, the, the, you can see they're both at the same degree and almost exact. So what does this mean? This is happening in sidereal Aquarius. Now, Aquarius does deal with the collective. It deals with humanity. It deals with societies. It deals with um, groups and organizations of all kinds. Aquarius also deals with distribution systems as well. Let's not forget that. I refer to it as the Amazon online of the Zodiac. Now, Mars is, ex is acceleration, passion, anger, sometimes war, conflict. Saturn is what? Restrictions, duties, responsibilities, infrastructure, slowing things down. So when these two come together, there can often sometimes be a feeling of breakdown sometimes in that area of life. So we saw with the dramas with, with the bridge, of course, um, 
you know, with the tanker crashing into the bridge. And again, in between the eclipses. Yeah. So it was between the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. And of course, that went global and stuff like that. That is very, very typical of stuff like that, because Mar uh, when Mars and Saturn are together, they are associated with accidents of uh, particularly can dealing with infrastructure and also as well. They can deal with acts of terrorism. And we saw sadly as well in, in Russia, those people that that were attacked in the um, in that performance uh, place. It was a concert, wasn't it? Or something like that. Uh, I think uh, over 100 people sadly perished. So that was when that this uh, conjunction was creeping up and getting stronger. Today, it's exact. But what's the message here for everyone? So wherever sidereal Aquarius falls into your chart, Saturn and Mars there are showing that that's the area of work, of where effort must be put forth over the next two years until they till they meet again so then it resets it of where um where due diligent diligence must be taken where we must turn our passions into action to have lasting results mars of course is passion and action saturn is larger uh, is um is results results that come after effort and work so many of us in humanity, so this means, uh, I would say, in the collective, we need to work on our communities. What is it that we're seeing a lot in the world is what community breakdown, yeah? It's not been talked about very much, and I was watching a journalist the other day who said we really should be talking about this more, particularly in Britain, but they're saying, this journalist was saying that child poverty in the UK is going to reach a four is is around about 40 percent i kid you not this is britain yeah so-called great britain yeah and we're going through this stuff because of you know things to you know you know the whole brexit scenario and in fact i was actually showing a client the other day when uranus was in the gandanta point between pisces and aries now remember aries is about breaking free yeah but it also can deal with uh, impulsive decisions and stuff like that. When Uranus was in the Gandanta point, which can mean what karmic not or drowning, that is when the UK voted to leave. Yeah. So it shows that it was a because Uranus is what sudden shocks and surprises. Many people were shocked that Britain left. I wasn't shocked. I said it was going to come true. I said, we're, I said, Britain's going to vote to leave. And I said, Trump's going to come in power. People looked at me like I was insane, as if I was talking utter gibberish. They're like, that would never happen. Oh, don't be so silly. I said, it will. I said, it will happen. I said, Britain is going to is going to vote to leave and Trump's going to get into power. Yeah. All happened. And all those people were just like, you are right. Yeah, this was before I was even even before my YouTube and stuff like that. Just on the psychic instinctive level, I, I just knew I just knew it was going to happen. So the big the outer planets are a big deal. They do affect a lot of society, but also personally as well. In Vedic astrology, traditional Vedic astrology, they're not counted, uh, but I count them. So I include Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Ceres and Chiron. Why? because they're too important to leave out because they make a lot of stuff happen. So this is where society has to fix itself. Humanity has to fix itself. Infrastructure and stuff is breaking down. A lot of societies uh, are breaking down. There's a lot of political discord around the world, isn't it? I'm sure we can all agree about that. But with this conjunction with uh, Saturn and Mars, this is showing where, where we can get results if we put the work in. So we need to come together and we need to fix our communities. We need to stop um, being too swayed by these billionaires or these uh, superstructures that are trying to what? Control everything. Control everyone. Let's not forget, Saturn in his own signs is very powerful. Saturn does deal with uh, governments, and it can bring out his more dictatorial side. So 
what this could also show is is that you know there could be governments or organizations that are going to put a lot of energy and passion into trying what to control everyone but we can take it round the other way and go no we're going to be a collective and we're going to support and love each other see both can be true at the same time so wherever this is happening in your life or in your chart so uh, you know depending on your ascendant that will be where you have to fix something rejig uh something you know um you know uh, uh recalibrate improve improve that area i'm a cancer ascendant so for all cancer ascendants this is happening in the eighth house so the eighth house deals with what transformation tarot alchemy magic you know the positive sides and it also deals with astrology as well what am i doing to try and help fix fix things i'm launching my book very soon yeah and when i just think of the timing i'm like oh my god yeah it's happening in my eighth house this is how I'm going to contribute to the collective to try and help the collective so we can recalibrate and all start <clears throat> rowing in the same direction. So and you can take that approach as well. So even, uh, even though it is, it is a tricky combination, when you get these malefics together, they are asking us, what work are you prepared to do for the collective? Because in this instance, they are happening in Aquarius, the sign of humanity. All right, let's look at the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So you can see this is warming up nicely. Now, this is going to become um, exact, like I said, on the 20th of April for three days. Yeah. So the 20th, 21st, 22nd. Yeah. With the 22nd being Passover. And like I said, I mentioned the cows. Yeah. So what does this mean? Jupiter deals with expansion of all kinds, but it's also passion as well. Very passionate. Deals with spirituality and religion of all kinds. But the shadow of Jupiter can also deal with fanaticism. Yeah. And religious zealots. Let's not forget that. What's Uranus? Uranus is sudden shocks and surprises. Liberation. Uranus can be very inspiring. It gives visions of the future, deals with technology, can deal with geniuses as well. But what's the shadow of Uranus? The shadow of Uranus can be anarchy. Yeah. Anarchy, destruction, impulsiveness and strange things, weird stuff. Just like what happened with the UK, yeah, when Uranus was Gandanta here, you know, Britain voted to leave and did everything against its own interest. And now look, you know, you've got these ridiculous, our ridiculous government that has been trying unsuccessfully to make out to everyone that, you know, Brexit has been a massive success. It hasn't. We're now in recession. I mean, this is tragic. You know, the fact that child poverty is now getting close to like 40 percent. It's like, come on. I Well, most people have woken up, but, you know, anyone who's still hanging on to that illusion, you know, literally think of the children just look uh, just when i just look around people are just looking lost you know maybe not so much in my particular area here there's quite a few affluent people that have moved into the area but just in general when i'm on the tube when i'm out and about people got their heads down they're just lost in the you know it's just wow but you know one lives and one learns, eh? You know, you one can scream from the rooftops as much as like, this is a bad idea. It, the collective has a way of moving, yeah? But anyway, so so Uranus does deal with unusual things, unusual events. So the, 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 the negative of this potentially could be that we could have extreme religious zealotry, which is impulsive and wild and weird, yeah? Um, Jupiter also deals with the law and judges and stuff like that. So we could have judges make weird decisions. Yeah. Remember, Duck Larange, uh, what's it? The SCOTUS is going to be proclaiming on Duck Larange to see if he's culpable or not. It's not even a question. Yeah. Let's not forget. Rewind. Judges in Washington found him culpable. Very, very senior judges. Amazing uh, judgment that they made. That should have been the end of it. Yeah, we all know this. But as you know, I said before, with SCOTUS, yeah, and they're trying to help Duck Larange. Anyway, 
So we'll see what they say. Maybe they will surprise us by actually upholding the law and applying it as it should. I hope. <laughs> That's what I hope for. Yeah. But let's look at some of the positives as well. The positives of this could be inspiration. So inspirational works, new insights uh, and new insights into ways of doing things in terms of spirituality, religion, you know, astrology, the cosmos, um, amazing discoveries, breakthroughs in science. This can also happen as well. It's not all going to be bad. Yeah, it will be pioneering new things because, look, we see here this is happening in the sign of Aries. Aries, though, is also a sign of war. Let's not forget that. And you will remember, you know, last year when I was saying at the time, I said, look, when Jupiter comes into sidereal Aries, which I think was around about March slash April 2023, yeah, 2023. I said, we'll have to see. He he might, if he's being very benefic, he might bring an ending uh, to some wars and stuff, or he could escalate them. And I think we've seen that's obviously been an escalation that's happened here, you know, because he is an expansive planet. However, he will move into sidereal Taurus on the 1st of May. Taurus is a much more peaceful sign than Aries, yeah? It's ruled by Venus. Venus is the planet of peace. A uh, Aries is ruled by Mars, and Mars is the planet of war. So if we take that kind of rather simplistic breakdown, I think we can hope for at least that Jupiterian expanding of war will uh, kind of come to an end. And we could see huge things happen, though, of course, in the economy. Uh, Taurus deals with money and stuff like that. Uranus will come in on the 1st of June. And as, as you've already heard me say many times, that's where I think global currencies and stuff like that will change. Central digital bank currencies and stuff is happening already. Uh, there is also a big kind of legal case happening with cryptocurrencies as well, XRP, which is going to be uh, one of the uh, counterpoints, as it were, to the SWIFT banking system. That's got some big legal cases, even Coinbase, which is actually one of the uh, digital uh, currencies exchanges, is also having some legal tangles. And if they make if they make it through those, uh, that will be a brave new world. And this is also what Jupiter is talking about with uh, Uranus conjunction, because Jupiter is also the economy. So this could be the really the next big stage in terms of changes to the global economy, currency, etc., stuff like that. Fiat currencies are going to have to find uh, their, a new way you know, because a lot of people are going to be going over to digital, not everyone, not all at the same time. But I anticipate with this conjunction, this is when it starts to becoming much more mainstream, as you've heard me say before. So there are the challenges there, which is, like I said, uh, the zealotry or... Um, uh, fanaticism uh, in terms of uh, religious, you know, dogma, stuff like that, with radical elements there because of Uranus. But then this is also as well times of innovation, breakthroughs, visions of the future, a brave new world, yes, could be, could be emerging. And uh, this conjunction how often does it happen? I think it's once every 14 years or something. But you know what? I think I, I think when I spoke about it before, I may have got the time wrong, The uh, th that duration. But the last time they were in Aries was really quite a long time ago. So we're really, Aries is also, it's not only just war, it's also new starts. We've got to remember that. So this is really kind of like a brave new world kind of energies at play with a kind of a breakdown and a reassessment of society uh, here with the Saturn-Mars combination, do you see? So all of this happening at the same time. And then look at all these planets here in Pisces. And you remember I said when Neptune moved into sidereal Pisces on February 22nd, 2023, I said we we're going to see a lot of stuff to do with uh, water, storms, um, all of this stuff. UK with major flooding over here. And we've just had one storm after another for months now we're now getting deep into april and it's still not very warm it would you know we're well into spring now and it should be warm sunny days especially here in the southeast 
I know you guys don't really associate uh, Britain that much with good weather, but it's normally good by now. And it's been blustery, blowy, lots of rain, much flooding and stuff. A lot of flooding around in many other places uh, around the world as well. So that will also be a theme. But Venus is exalted. So that is a positive uh, thing. Ra, who is here as well, causing his usual mischief. And you remember how I said with the nodes of the moon being in the Pisces Virgo axis, I said this was all about what? Health and healing and overcoming obstacles. So a lot of people have been dealing with health issues this this uh, uh, so far. Uh, we can see even, bless her, with, 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 Lady, uh, with Lady G, she's been having some issues with her health. Many of my clients have been having issues with their health. I'm trying, you know, do my best to look after my health, but I've had to rejig things and stuff like that, look at my blood sugar, etc. Everyone's having a bit of a health drama or crisis or people very close to them. So this is the energy of the nodes as well. And they change signs on the 29th of November, 2023. So a few months ago, and, you know, we've seen a big up spike. Also as well, going back as well to what, King Charles and Princess Catherine, that's also brought what, health and healing and overcoming obstacles out into the wider world, just as I said it would when I made my predictions back in September 2023, it was a few months before the, the nodes moved, but at least now you can see, you know, the results. So anyway, so it, I will, let's just put there, let's just put let's close that down let's do the stop share oh look i'm already at an hour so there we are let's call it a day there so i hope you guys found that interesting so the key takeaways here yes we are seeing power trying to uh establish power trying to do power grabs but we can do the alchemy we can embrace magic yes and the future Saturn and Mars conjunction is showing how society is kind of like breaking down, but it also shows what needs to be fixed. So we need to heal and fix our communities. We need to help each other and stop fighting with each other, uh, because if they have us divided, then we're not going to be able to unite. Yeah, the powers that be that wish to see that division. And then with the Jupiter-Uranus combination, yes, we're going to see some crazy, you know, ideal, religious ideological stuff, not just whatever's going on in the Middle East, you know, all, all over. There will be that. Uh, fanaticism in general, radical shocks and surprises, of course. I also mentioned earthquakes, as you know. Taiwan, sadly. Then we had earthquakes in New York and New Jersey. So we'll be seeing those unexpected things. But it's also part of a brave new world we're going to see uh, more of the digital currencies coming online uh breakthroughs in science this is also when people's consciousness the vibration will also go up as well people are going to be looking for more alternatives they're going to be looking more at astrology hopefully more at sidereal uh, astrology but astrology in general i think is going to become more popular particularly as well as people see that you know certain leaders and People aren't getting the results uh, that they want. They want to know what's happening in the future. So there's all of that as well, as along with the esoteric sciences with Reiki, et cetera, and stuff like that. We could also see more phenomena in the sky. We've already got the comet that's come in. Do you remember I, I did say as well when Saturn was in a sidereal Aquarius where he is now, there'll be phenomena, thing to do with the sky. They start with, the, remember, the Chinese space balloon and then all of the alien disclosures and all of this kind of stuff all happening at once so amongst the tumult remember there are tremendous opportunities as well but remember we're going into we're now in duapara yuga we're coming out of kali yuga we're going into duapara yuga let me just remind y'all with the illustration so yeah look there is kali yuga when humanity human human consciousness was at its lowest we're just out here yeah a little ways to go yet, yeah? but Dwapara Yuga, yeah, which is the age of energy, yeah, and it lasts for 2,400 years. So we're in the upsweep. So this is the age of energy, technology, but also magic as well. So don't forget that. Raise your vibration, your consciousness. Use the energy of the planets as well for to not only advantage yourself, but also everyone else. 
and reach for those higher vibrations so we can transmute that energy, the energy of Pluto, and transform that lead into gold. So I will leave it there. Thank you so much. Please don't forget as well to like and subscribe and share this video. And you'll see me tomorrow on Thursday Fry Up. All right. That's all for now. Bye-bye.